In the name of the living God, who is creator, Christ and Holy Spirit. Amen. As a reminder to some of you, maybe as news to or information, new information to some of you, um, I want to explain what a Collect of the Day is. The Collect of the Day, which is, which is printed in the bulletin every Sunday, is, um, this is the word collect. It's a collect. It's a collection of themes for the day. And so it sort of sets the tone for the focus of that day. Um, some of the collects that we use on Sundays are ancient collects um, written by Thomas Cranmer back in 1549 for the first English Church of England prayer book, or some are quite new. But anyway, they're important. They're important because they set the tone for the entire worship. So let's take a look. Let's take a look at the Collect of the Day. And there's a pattern to every single Collect of the Day. First, it starts out with an address. Almighty God. You know, sometimes it's a description of who Almighty God is. Then it says, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. A description of what Almighty God has done. And we sang that hymn, which is lifted from, from, from this collect. Grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching. Grant us so to be joined together in a spirit of unity. That's the theme. That's the theme we're going to look at. That we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you. A temple, a place where we can in fact be with God and therefore be inspired to do God's will in the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Hmm. Joined together in a spirit of unity. Again, that entrance hymn, I mean, it's a thriller. <laughs> Talking about the church in which uh, sometimes there's conflict and sometimes we, we are challenged um, either about what we believe or what we say or what we do, but um, it's one church, one church. And standing on the foundation, the truth foundation and cornerstone, which is, is Jesus Christ. So with that beginning spirit of unity, gathered together with a spirit of unity, we go into a difficult place. It is for me, I don't know whether it is for you or not, with that first story about Abraham and Isaac, I don't like that. I don't like it. I don't like what it says. I don't like how it touches my heart. I don't like its image of God. I don't like that story. And I remember back in uh, 78, um, I was ordained in 1976 and was married and became a stepfather of a six-year-old. I think it was 1978, we went to a, a, a Christian education conference at Canuga, Canuga Conference Center, which is in the mountains of uh, North Carolina. Wonderful place. Um, and this is a fa <clears throat> fantastic conference. A man named John Westerhoff, who was a leading church educator in the Episcopal Church. And so one of the things that he really liked to do was to create experiences. So I like experiential stuff, but create experiences for us to get the message of, of a certain tenet of our faith. And so one of the sessions was about this story. And he said to us, um, the point of it was, there are challenges about being a faithful Christian, and we are invited and encouraged to remain faithful to God. And so he said, here's a challenge. I want you to write down the members of your family, the people who are most important to you. And after a period of silence, I want you to take that paper up here to the front and discard it discard it into this bowl, to give them up. I didn't like that experience, and so I didn't do it. I wasn't going to give up my wife and my stepson 
I wasn't going, I, I just didn't feel comfortable enough to do that. Maybe I thought it was stupid. I thought it was manipulative. I wasn't going to do it. And I didn't. I and some others just sat in our chairs. And I can still remember to this day how I felt about that. I also don't like this story because I had a son, Aiden, who died as a young adult, way too young and way too dramatically. So anytime I, I, I hear of a story of a father killing a son, it's just, it's tough. And I guarantee you, because I've seen heads nod here and at 8 o'clock, that whole concept of killing a man, a father killing a son, is just unconscionable. It's not a part of our culture. It's not a part of good behavior. It's just, it's criminal. So what's that about? We struggle with that at our, at our class. We had a, another great class at 915. And um, basically everybody agreed with what I'm saying, right? <laughs> It's not a good story, but it's in there, and we read it. We read it. So what's the message? Well, let me give it a shot. Maybe it is this, is that even though we will face tremendous challenges in our life, we are called to have a caring relationship with God no matter what. We are called, just like Abraham was, to be faithful no matter what. Even if we feel like maybe what God wants us to do doesn't really fit, maybe if we hang in there, we will in fact discover that there's another side to what God really wants. But the point is, Abraham is known for being faithful to God in a loving, caring relationship with God. And we too can always, always grow in that kind of relationship, no matter what kind of test scares us or makes us feel insecure or puts us in a place where we feel like we may fail this test. Maybe it's a time for us to say, if this is really God calling me, there's got to be, there's got to be a good point here. In that gospel reading, it's about caring relationships, being bound together with a spirit of harmony. Also, um, Jesus says, if anybody receives you, they receive me. If they receive me, they receive the Father who sent me. That whole thing, and we talked about it a few weeks ago about the Trinity being about relationships. The spirit among the three persons of the Trinity, that spirit of unity, of spiritual unity, for the sake of fullness in the God in whom we believe, and also to set for us an example of how important it is to live with a spirit of unity, emotional and spiritual unity. And it is, it is my experience that when I am not in unity with some people who are really important to me, or some people who are brand new to me, or some people who have different opinions than I do, maybe with whom I am in conflict, it's really important to me to pray about that. I mean, that, do an inner work of sort of thinking it out and evaluating it in one way to resolve it, but really saying, God, I, I can't get beyond this conflict. I'm in with somebody who I don't know that well, or somebody who I love with all my heart, and yet this is a problem. I'm not at unity. I'm not in a caring relationship, and I want to be. I want to return to that caring relationship. God is there. Whether we're talking about God the Creator, or Jesus Christ, or the Holy Spirit, God is there to help us regain that caring relationship, because that's what it's all about. Love one another. Love God and love your neighbor. God is love. Love one another. And that's true of church. Again, that first hymn, it's about church. That second hymn, can't help from singing. 
That's about faith community. And so we in a faith community, sometimes there are conflicts. I don't think there are any big conflicts right here, but sometimes there are conflicts in churches. And we are called, as a way to make an example to the world, we are called that when there is conflict, ask God to help us. Because God wants us to live in a spirit of unity for the sake of the world. For the sake of the world. And that brings me to this day, or to this weekend, this 4th of July weekend, Tuesday, Independence Day. God wants us to live in a spirit of unity. Whether we are Republicans or Democrats or Independents, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. God wants us to live in the spirit of unity. So, in the summer of 2014, that was the first summer that uh, Joanne and I lived in our new place out near Orlean in the country. Um, which we love. Um, that first summer, that first 4th of July, um, I went for a walk in the woods, sort of. And um, I was moved by this very thing. And I wrote a little piece. And I want to I share it to you. For me, it's about being connected, being with a spirit of unity with my environment, with people who had gone before, with people whom I love now. And I'd like to read it. Independence Day 2014. On this Independence Day, I walked my dogs down a country lane through the forest to a clearing overlooking Virginia Piedmont farmland. I stood there with Hazel and Jack as a cool breeze rose gently up the hillside. Then there were thoughts. I thought about the wonder of God's creation, this earth. This beautiful and complex life platform was God's gift to all of humanity. I thought about Native Americans who stood on the same spot. This land was their home. I thought about Irish and Scottish immigrants who gathered here and made both mournful and joyful music. This land was their hope. I thought about young soldiers in blue and gray whose blood was shared, shed in the valley before me. This land was their grave. And I thought about my little piece of this land, just a lazy walk away, and the house in which I live, an 1880 farmhouse that was originally the home of a freed African-American family. Do I deserve the freedom of this land in which I live? A freedom for which I have suffered little? A freedom which I did not earn? Yes, I do. I do deserve it. And I re recommit myself to doing my small part in setting free both God's earth and God's people in order that they may live into what God calls good. This is an important time in the year for us to feel connected across divisions, across problems, for the sake of the world and as an expression of our belief in the triune God. Now I'm going to do something different. Would you pull out the prayer book? <laughs> I'd like you to turn, are there prayer books over here? Okay. I'd like you to turn your prayer book to page 258. Page 258. Here's another collect. The collect for the nation. Let us pray together. Lord God Almighty, you have made all the peoples of the earth for your glory, to serve you in freedom and in peace. Give to the people of our country a zeal for your justice 
and the strength of forbearance, that we may use our liberty in accordance with your gracious will, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.